Hello and welcome to the NASCAR Regional Pro Cup Series for your third race of the season here at the Utica Rome Speedway. This is our third year in a row coming to this track. It was our is our inaugural race for season one, the first time we came out here. Uh, that was won by PJ Williams. We ran here last year as well. It was one of the Fitzwaters who won. And now someone has a chance to be the third career winner here at the Utica Rome Speedway. It should be a great event. We're running with a slightly shorter field this time, as seven of our drivers have gotten the call to move up to the NASCAR Phillips Cup Series. Uh, we don't have a replacement yet for those drivers, but we may, uh, starting next race in Irwindale. Let's take a look at the starting order for this race. John Gambit, second poll of the season. Good job for him. Julian D'Artagnan's Jr. falling behind, followed by Acevedo, Ormond, Ben Stevens, Colin Bartell, Mitch Brett, Scott Rauch, William Duncan. Then there's LJ Toledo, Brandon Jefferson, Tord Larson, Joseph Curtis, Eric Powers, Jerry Lespool, Darren Blake, Matt Duell, Alex Tanker, and Cody Hagen, your top 20. Rounding out the field is Daniel Beauchard, Reina Hirose, and Jeff Toledo. And we had an issue on the start for the 52 of Ben Stevens. He stalled. He's going to bring that car down the pit road. He will not get the start. We have more problems on track. They go four wide in the lead, and William Duncan's around. So is uh, Nathan Ormond. I think another car got on his roof back there. These drivers scramble to make it to the line. We're going to have to take a look at a replay. See what happened. On board with Brandon Jefferson. And he gets a face full of dirt. But you see those two cars get together. Nowhere to go for the 15. And he just gets capsized on the back straightaway. Already some attrition. We have actually more problems as we show you this replay. Uh, Grace Nakaveda, who's near the front, he makes contact with the wall. Heavy contact! Car flipping over, that's Tord Larson. As a huge crash on the front straight, well, let's get another angle of that. And Darren Blake's just going to catapult the 85, and that was an odd flip. He uh, hit the dirt in a weird angle, I want to say. Well, the opening four laps have been an exciting one, as uh, we've had four wide for the race lead and several big accidents couple cars going on their lid but Julian D'Artanius Jr. car number 21 the Geos machine having a good run out front in that Volvo D'Artanius the only driver who's uh running all three seasons of the schedule with the exception of Sean Angel who ran earlier this year uh still trying to get his first career victory uh we look a little further back to Alex Tanker who's fifth in points now Martin Suarez, your points leader, was one of the seven drivers who moved up to the Phillips Cup Series, which means that there's an open spot at the top of the standings, and Alex Tanker wants that position. The 08 machine won at Daytona. Didn't have a particularly great run in South Boston, but top five today could uh, work wonders for the Gravely number 08. And we have a pass for the race lead. It's John Gambit, car number 13, going to get a good run to the inside line. Eric Powers, the Peruvian, Trying to get there as well as he's looking low. That outside line has been very good to these drivers. You can get a lot of momentum out there. That's where the racing line is. And as you can see, they just rocket past the triple six. John Gambit crossing the start finish line. Leads some laps today. Has gotten the pole in two events this year. He's been great at qualifying. Just hasn't been able to get it done in race trim. But right now, Gambit leading the field. D'Artanis is trying to catch up. Eric Powers lost a bit of ground there. Head on the front straightaway here. Oh, slow car, car number four. And we have a stack of all the leaders involved in this one. And John Gambit, easy come, easy go. Cars are smoking. I think I think that was LJ Toledo who had a problem on the front straightaway. A couple cars got together, it would seem. Near the front. And now that's going to put Colin Bartell, the number four, the 949, the Crazy John's machine, out front. Now, Colin Bartell, a season one competitor. Almost won the race in Bearfield that season, but midway through the race, in what seemed to be a dominant run, got caught up in a wreck and just couldn't get it done that time. Colin Bartel trying to look for redemption in his second season on the tour. Uh, did not attempt last year. Eric Powers moves to second. Julian D'Artagnan Jr. to third. And things get uh, shuffled near the back as Curtis and Bouchard work their way into the top five. Here's the battle for second place as Eric Powers stuck behind the lap car of Scott Roush. And uh, Scott Roush, uh, only 12 laps on track, but uh, I guess you could say he's seen a lot today. There's John Gambit returning to the racetrack in car number 13.
Julian D'Artanius Jr. trying to uh, make the pass on the triple six, but Power is going to get by Scott Roush in the Munoz machine and hang on to it. Powers did very well last week in South Boston. His teammate won the race, but now that he's moved up, Eric Powers is hoping to maybe steal some spotlight in this series. We talked about Daniel Beauchard a second ago, but the 71 unsponsored machine, the young Canadian driver, started near the tail end of the field in this event, has worked his way up and avoided all the trouble, and now finds himself in the top five. This could be a great points day for car number 71 if he can just hang on to it. He's got Alex Tanker behind him trying to steal away, but while we talk about him, let's take a time to mention that this weekend is part of a triple threat weekend, actually a quadruple tr threat weekend. Because the NASCAR Phillips Cup Series is here at the Utica Roma Speedway for their main event. They've already run their sprint race the other day. And we also had the newly formed NASCAR KLM Series uh, on the NASCAR CA channel. Uh, they ran their race yesterday as well. Uh, that series is a new feeder series for our division. So if you have not checked out the sprint race on the Tasman Dutch channel or the KLM race on the NASCAR CA channel, uh, you definitely should. They were quality events. You should check those out. Uh, and then, of course, the main event coming soon. Going back to the action on track, we look at DJ Curtis in the 77. A good run for the Curtis brothers as uh, DJ's in the top five and Joseph Curtis is in the top ten. Uh, both of these drivers have been fairly quiet this season. Uh, I believe uh, Curtis made some moves at Daytona to try and work his way to the uh, front near the end, but uh, wasn't able to get it done. Could be a good opportunity for these brothers to uh, work their way through. Uh, uh, Curtis, I believe, was a light series driver, a NASCAR lights driver in uh, season one. Uh, I think he only ran a partial schedule on that, however. I remember, uh, if I remember correctly, I think he went for a tumble at Kalamazoo. But right now, doing a lot better than that on track in the the uh, JCS machine. We've got a report that the officials are warning John Gambit, who's been on and off pit road, uh, that he needs to start maintaining race pace if he wants to stay on the racetrack. Uh, he's not made a lap without coming down pit road. As you can see, he's doing that once again. So the officials are uh, keeping an eye out on him. There's a chance he may get black flagged. To the front of the pack, Colin Bartel has been unchallenged. I'm, I'm getting flashbacks to Bearfield, and I think Bartel is too. Uh, he's hoping for uh, something a little bit different this time around. But car number 949, working his way around the track. He just has nothing in front of him, nothing behind him. Great job by Colin Bartel. As you can see, uh, ooh, we got some smoke around here. I'm not sure if that was uh, just standard dirt track wear or... Uh, oh, it could be uh, John Gambit. Wait, we do have a problem on the track uh, showing a replay of it. Looks like Alex Tanker went for a spin in car number 08. Uh, unfortunate for him. He was trying to chase down Bouchard. But it uh, looks like he'll have to sell for a little bit lower in the top 10. He's going to lose a lap to Colin Bartel. I think that might have been what that spin was. Oh, we have a report of something else happening. Oh, we missed this. Scott Roush and Joseph Curtis make contact, and they both go off track in turn four. That's going to end their days with only a handful of laps to go. Coming near the end of the race, car number 21, Julian Tartanius Jr., has reeled in the triple six. He's trying to make the pass for second place. Uh, I'm not sure if either of these drivers are going to have anything for Colin Bartel. Especially considering that there's less than 10 drivers left on track. I don't see uh, Bartel being held up by lap traffic anytime soon. But with only a few laps to go, Eric Power is still trying to hold off the number 21 machine. Uh, we've got a report that Gambit has actually been disqualified. and He's been bl black flagged. But he's still trying to drive that car around. I, I think they're arguing with the officials. Oh, uh, we got a pass for position. Going into the final lap as Daniel Beauchard has caught up to the 77 of DJ Curtis. And that's a pass for fourth place. He's going to use that uh, lap car of Alex Tanker as a push ahead. But coming to the line, Colin Bartel dominated this race. And he will get his first career NASCAR Regional Pro Cup Series victory. Congratulations to Colin Bartel who's had a pretty quiet season so far. Uh, he really didn't do too well in the previous two outings, so 
This is going to be a bit of a change of pace for Bartell. So congratulations to Bartell on his win today. Let's take a look at our finishing results. As we mentioned, Colin Bartell wins the race, leads the most laps. Not a bad way to spend your evening. Eric Powers in second, followed by Julian D'Artagnus Jr., who led a couple laps early. Daniel Bouchard and DJ Curtis round the top five. And Matt Duell, we didn't talk about him much, but a solid sixth-place finish for him. Alex Tanker a lap down. And look at all these drivers that are out of the race. Just absolute bedlam on the racetrack today. I believe uh, Les Poole, Toledo, Hirose, and Stevens all had issues out there. Ben Stevens uh, actually was able to get that car fired up after stalling on the pace lap, but uh, ended up getting caught up in something else. We had a hard time keeping track of all the things that happened today. Uh, those were the drivers that ran out the field. Let's take a look at your point standings. Cody Hagen, despite finishing three laps down, top ten finish for him. He goes to the points lead. Tanker in second, followed by Duel, Duncan, and Powers, your top five. Joseph Curtis and Darren Blake still hanging in there. Martin Suarez, despite not running and no longer being in the series, uh, still hanging on to eighth in points. Tord Larson and Daniel Bouchard round out the top ten. Those three are all tied at the bottom. Thank you for watching this installment of the DASCAR Regional Pro Cup Series. Next week will be, he well not next week, but next race will be at the Irwindale Speedway when the DASCAR Phillips Cup Series makes the trek out to that track. Should be a fun event. We'll hope to see you there. Until then, thank you for watching the DASCAR Regional Pro Cup Series. We'll see you next time.